Ellis Island originally opened back in 1892 as the first point of entry for millions of new Americans in the heart of New York Harbor. Created as our nation's first inspection station for immigration, Ellis was also a medical facility, a detention center, and was completely abandoned before emerging as a great memorial to diversity and immigration. But as the future of our immigration story is still being written, efforts to expand public access and increase historic interest continue to define the legacy of this New York City landmark. Well, Ellis Island is a great memorial to the populating of America. It's a tribute to our welcome. It's also on occasion a story of not being so welcome. I think it can be a really life-changing experience to know that something existed before you, that you are yourself one step in this journey. On one side of the island you have the Great Hall and the museum now and the water tower. And on the other side you have that giant hospital, which is literally endless with the different yards and it's very strange energy. We are continually learning more about this place, not only in the stories that have been told in the past, but new stories and people's new ideas about what Ellis Island means and what it signifies. Ellis Island is in New York Harbor, one of the great harbors of the world. It is an internationally significant location because it is the place where 12 million immigrants came through on their way to the United States. National Park Service started managing Ellis Island in 1965 when the place was in fairly rough shape. It had been abandoned for over a decade. Roofs had collapsed, windows were broken. Overall, the site was in fairly poor condition. There was a lot of discussion over the years about what to do with Ellis Island and how to protect these places to preserve the buildings and stories that haven't always been told and talk about their relevance, not just to history, but to the future as well. Well, the Statue of Liberty Ellis Island Foundation was created back in 1982 to restore the Statue of Liberty in Ellis Island. Nobody knew how much it would cost. Actually, nobody knew anything, except that we knew that the most important place in the building was the Great Hall. And it was abandoned in 1954. If it had been carefully abandoned, there would have been less decay. You know, the windows were open for 20 or 30 years and things got wet. So everybody agreed, okay, let's dry the thing out. And we did, but not the baggage and dormitory building. It was just too big and too far gone for us to even think about at that point. But obviously there's lots of space here and whatever can be done to enhance telling the Ellis Island story of the past and the American story of the present is the right thing to do. You know, with or without pasting, if you walk in Ellis Island and especially in that section of Ellis Island, you'll have uh, this uh, energy around you. Uh, when you would cross on, on this tunnel to go on the other side, what was really interesting is that you find some rooms that have never been opened. The door have been stuck there forever. And when you walk in a room and suddenly think there's someone looking at you, it's a strange feeling that that person's really there. And it's crazy because sometimes you make a piece of art, you never know when they'll make sense. And it connects us to a situation we're living today and we don't know how to deal with. And when you know the kind of stories and the travel that those people made and abandoned everything behind them, it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's fascinating. There are a lot of things about the Ellis Island story that, that people might not realize. And perhaps it doesn't impact you in a direct way to see the steps that people took to get where they needed to go but those were always factors in the Ellis Island story, and I think always factors in the American story. And it's comforting in a way to know that the times that we live in might seem monumental, they might seem very strange to us, but these are just a continuation of that conversation that's been happening ever since there was an America to, to have a story about. I know people have tried to whitewash the Ellis Island story, but it stood for the real story of immigration, which was on and off and continues to be on and off today. This place where 40% of the population of the country can trace its roots had not intended to be this way. 
So we had to take Ellis Island and make it into the story of what America was all about. It's interesting to look at Ellis Island to learn from what actually was great about this system of welcoming people and stories that are pretty recent history. And this little island in the middle of the water, it's really a place where you have to go to try to understand how to deal with our future, you know. So as we continue to reflect on the past, present, and future of Ellis Island, efforts to preserve historic structures and share the real story of immigration remain ongoing. And as our relationship with immigration continues to evolve, we should take a moment to celebrate the extraordinary significance of Ellis Island and its impact on our history, our memory, and our lives.